Hi, my name's Rachel Andrews. Welcome to Everyday Athlete. I'd like to do a big welcome to my new subscribers that have joined me over the last couple of weeks. It's great to have you along and I hope you're enjoying the content. For those of you that it's the first video you've seen, please check out my channel. I've got lots and lots of videos about outdoor swimming. On this week's video, I'm going to be looking at what an outdoor swimmer should know about the tide. I'm going to be looking at springs, neaps, current and where to find out the information that you need to decide whether to swim today. I have already made one video about tides called when will there be enough tide to swim or launch and I'll drop a link to that below. That's interpreting the data that we get and a worked example of how to know exactly how much water there'll be where you're going for a swim. So we're on springs this weekend which means we're just after full moon or the new moon and it means that the tides are going to be higher than they were last weekend when we were on neaps. So every two weeks when there is a full moon or a new moon, just after that, a couple of days afterwards, you get the highest tides. Today the high water is around about uh, four and a half metres, which is really quite high for the Solent. You can see just along the beach here, the line where the tides come up to because I'm just after the second high water and it will start to recede quickly. So for us, when we're, when we're swimming on springs, something that's of interest to us is that the tide is going to be moving that much quicker. The currents will be stronger if we're somewhere where there's a decent amount of flow. It's really going to fly along. One thing that can be brought into play on a spring tide is that older groins or short groins end up in the water where maybe you've never seen them in there before. So just make sure you're far enough out to avoid dragging your legs over them or getting caught because uh, some of these look pretty spiky and a little bit gnarly and you don't want that to end your uh, swim unhappily. Because of the height of the water comes up the beach, anything that's within its grasp might well get swept into the sea. So at spring tides, you stand a higher chance of swimming into debris that's floating about in the water, be it that it's swept in off the beach or from high up an estuary somewhere. But, yeah, there's bits and bobs to keep an eye out for. I've come back down to show you what low water springs looks like here. As you remember earlier, this little line, you can just about make out the difference between the lighter stones and the darker ones, was high water at about uh, four and a half metres. And then out here, this is low water and it's about 50 centimetres. So as you can see, there are things that get revealed that we might not have known were there. So when you're scoping somewhere out, going at low water springs is a really good time to go because you can spot all the things that could be a problem that you might bump your legs or feet on when you're going along. This little shell of a boat, that pipeline there probably covered in barnacles. Um, I guess the sort of thing it tells me is that it's a good idea to always swim with something on your feet to protect them because you might not be able to, uh, you might not know what's underneath there. Neap tides happen at the halfway point between full moon and new moon, so when there's half a moon in the sky. And what we get there is a much less of a range, so you get a lower high water and a higher low water. So just behind me now, we're on low water neaps, and as you can see, well, or can't see, there was a pipeline I saw last week um, which goes from here out to the red post and is something that would be an obstruction if I was to swim at this state of the tide because it's not very far under there. So just be wary that where you've got a high low water that will also bring into play potential obstacles that you might have spotted if you went and looked the week beforehand at low water on springs. And here we have high water neaps. As you can see from the line behind me, it's quite a lot further down than it was last week for springs. That's because it's a low high and a high low. There's lots of information available for us to be able to tell the currents and the direction of the flow of the water, but they're aimed at people who are much further out, like this vessel passing behind me here. Um, it's aimed at shipping and at cruising, but it's not aimed at somebody who's right next to the beach. Um, 
So although that information is interesting, that we can tell the general flow of the, the general direction of the flow, actually in close to the beach, it could be doing the direct opposite because you might be in a giant eddy with it flowing absolutely not where you're expecting. So critical for me when I get in somewhere for a swim is to tell what is the current doing. And I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques for working that out. Trying to spot flow can be a little bit difficult from the side. You might be lucky enough to spot a bit of flotsam. I'm not sure if you can see. There's a little piece of wood there, which is just floating past me. So I know the tide's going that way. I'm gonna show you a couple of methods which are a bit more reliable. One way to tell the current, if you're in an area where there are mooring buoys, is to take a look at the, the big one is the mooring buoy, and the small one behind it, or downstream of it, is the pickup buoy. Now there's not much distance between these two at the moment, so I'd say there's not a great deal of tide going on. In fact, let's see, I just drift past. Slowly. But as you can see, I'm gradually drifting away from it and I'm on the same side as the small boy. Another thing you can do is you can just hang in the water and figure out what's going on by looking back at the beach. So floating parallel to it to see if you're moving relative to what's behind the beach. If it's really, really difficult to tell, well then there's not so much current but sometimes it becomes really obvious. And for me, the safest thing to do is to swim into that current to start with and then have the easy drift back or a little bit of a help on my swim back from the current when I'm finishing. Given that there's less water moving on neeps, that necessarily means that there is less current as well. So you'll find the strongest current around when we've got a new moon or a full moon and less strong during neeps at that halfway point. So it will vary from week to week where you're swimming as to how strong the current is. Irrespective of the direction of flow of the current, it's going to be move at, moving at its quickest in between high and low water. So just approaching high water and in and around low water is when we'll have least movement of water. Once you get between those two, halfway between the two, you're gonna have the fastest flow. There are local variations and it's about getting used to where you swim. Aside from the direction of the current, we're also interested in the direction of the wind. Because if we have the wind um, blowing from the direction that the current is going, then it picks up the surface of the water and we get waves and it becomes quite a lumpy condition. That's not the issue today. The issue today is whether or not I'll be able to see in a minute. I think you get the idea. The wind's picking up, and so are the little waves here. Let's get swimming. You can find tidal height information really easily via an easy internet search. So just popping in the name of where you're thinking of swimming, plus tide, and that should come up with it. What you're presented with then is a potentially a series of numbers, or it might be that you get a graph. Um, and in the video that I've made, link below, called how, when will there be enough tide? There's an explanation of how to interpret that data. The other kind of information that you can find is about flow, and that tends to be directed at the, um, the kind of sailing and cruising and uh, shipping market, and that gives data for deeper water. It's not gonna be accurate for right next to the beach unless you're swimming on the edge of, a, of an actual channel. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. And if you have, you'll drop me a comment. I always reply to my comments in the uh, YouTube link below. And also, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd love to have you along. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.